Good morning to you all, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to you, students, families of our students. I welcome you to this um, august gathering. Make no mistake, it is the official outdooring, the official inauguration of the first and leading specialist science and math secondary school for gifted girls in Africa. If you are excited about this, please give yourselves a round of applause for making yourself available to share in this worthy course. But before the plot unfolds in earnest, may I invite one of our scientists to lead us in a short prayer. Please welcome Josephine Kujo. Great day. Um, we pray that as we are about to start this program, we let everything end well, that the end, all glory and adoration shall be delivered unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're a true scientist. You know, scientists are very brief. You don't have time for, you know. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael, and um, I'll be steering this mighty ship to shore, and I'll be assisted by Ophelia, who is another scientist. And um, I'll be introducing very important personalities who have joined us um, today. We have in our midst the British High Commissioner to Ghana, His Excellency Mr. John Benjamin. We have the Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana, Her Excellency Mrs. Adekumbi Sunaike Ayodeji. We have our own Minister-designate for Information, very inspiring um, personality, who was the spokesperson for His Excellency Nana Akufuado, jo oh, sorry, Honorable Mustafa Ab Abdul Hamid. Thank you very much. We have Dr. Tom Ilobe, Chair and Founder of the African Gifted Foundation. We have Dr. Ashong, Country Director of the African Gifted Foundation. Thank you. We have Dr. Kaufman a scientist and lecturer of the University of Ghana who is an inspiration to our girls. We have Mr. Titi of a principal, Herman Minor International College. We also have Mrs. Rosalind Kanyo, a trustee of the academy. So in due course, as and when they arrive, I will introduce them to the house. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to listen to a very um, profound speech. This is the man who has put all these um, smiles on the faces of our girls. You know, when we are writing recommendations for our students, there's a portion that says, um, what are the first three words that you use to um, describe the students? And the first word that comes to mind is simple. He's indeed, in my estimation, a very simple man. He's the chair and founder of the African Gifted Foundation, and of course, the progenitor of the African Science Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we welcome Dr. Tom Ilobe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. The 
MC asked if I would like to stand in the shade because of the sun. He doesn't know I'm a local fellow. <laughs> I've been standing in the sun for a long time. Oh, okay. uh -huh. So, um, uh, Your Excellency, British High Commissioner, Your Excellency, Nigerian High Commissioner, uh, Mr. Uh, Designate of Information, all the uh, delegates who are here, um, on behalf of the trustees of the Africa Gifted Foundation, uh, uh, as well as myself, two of whom are here, Dr. Fiona Bartels Ellis and Rosaline Kanya, uh, and also the director of the Africa Gifted Foundation in Ghana, Dr. Jacob Ashong, uh, and our head teacher, our head teacher uh, Mrs. Afua Adabi, who is hiding somewhere, we'll see her later. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the Africa Science Academy. Um, and thank you very much for coming. This is a very special day for the Africa Science Academy and it's a very special day in my life uh, as well. Um, and often uh, people ask, uh, where did this start? Where was the inspiration for creating this school? Um, I will tell you that. Before I tell you that, I'd just like to thank uh, some of the sponsors that have helped us make this happen. Uh, Tunnel Oil have been a, a strong sponsor of ours uh, right from the start, um, uh, when we were running academies in different parts of Africa. Um, Vitol Foundation ha has recently uh, decided to give us some support. And from the UK, we've had some great support from foundations such as the Frank Jackson Foundation, the Aldridge Foundation, some individuals, lots of individuals in the UK have supported us, including Stephen G, uh, John Layfield, just a, a great group of individual support. Uh, here, we've had great support from law firm, Kimothy and co, uh, who are providing pro bono support. So this sort of thing doesn't happen without a huge amount of support. And you being here as well uh, continues in that tradition by just uh, really helping us. Um, so where did this start? Where was the inspiration? Well, I'll tell you the truth. There's usually a story that I tell that I make up, but this one I'll tell you the actual truth. <laughs> this started nearly 25 years ago, um, the idea of something like this. Um, and I was uh, in the process of getting married, and I was given one task, uh, and my task was the honeymoon. And being a scientist, I thought, what better place to go on a honeymoon than a science research institute in America? <laughs> so uh, that's what we did. Now, I'll give you a piece of advice which may be useful to you. It turns out that is not considered a romantic destination for a honeymoon. <laughs> well, I was not briefed at the time. So we went to uh, the Santa Fe Institute in, uh, in New Mexico. Um, the Center for the Study of Complexity. And the reason why I was particularly interested in what they do there, the article and science research, um, is the way they think about change. And one of the ways they think about change is that in order to change something, you don't have to have thousands or ten thousands or hundred thousands of people. You can affect change by just one thing, one thing can cause change, one person, one action can cause change that ripples around across the world. The way they describe it is when a butterfly flaps its wings in text, it can cause a tornado in Tokyo. Or to put it another way, when a butterfly flaps its wings in Tema, it can cause a tornado in Tanzania. And so what I became interested in is how many girls would it take to change the entire continent of Africa? A million, a hundred thousand, ten thousand? And thinking about the way the Santa Fe Institute thinks about these things, I realized that actually one girl, one girl with a passion for science and technology, one girl who makes a breakthrough that fundamentally changes the landscape can impact an entire continent. And so what we're doing here is collecting butterflies. We are finding the girls who have the ability to change the continent. Then they're from all over the continent and they're passionate about science and technology and they're passionate about Africa. And one by one, they will do things 
conflict in the future that will have a profound impact uh, on this continent. And that's why we are doing what we're doing, that's why the sponsors are helping us, and that's why we're pushing so hard to search out and find these young women, to give them an education that they won't get and wouldn't get anywhere else, so that they can make those changes, those little flaps of the wing that will have a profound impact on our continent. What we're doing here, there's a phrase that says, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. This is the first step on that journey. And today, opening officially the Africa Science Academy really is that first step. But this school will go on for years and years, 10, 20, 30 years. When I do things, I design them and build them to last. And this will last for the next 50 years and will grow and grow and grow. Great. With your help, with your support, we will change Africa one girl at a time.